everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this midsummer trellis scarf that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon. Thanks. Bye. She wants to run. You want to run? <laughs> yeah, she's off. Okay, to make this scarf you'll need some yarn and I'm using this uh, cotton polyester blend, fine weight, fine weight yarn. Um, if you can, find something similar to this, if you're, especially if you're making it as a summer project. Um, it's a nice lightweight scarf with lots of holes in it, so, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, good for a summer project. You could use a, a wool blend um, to make it a winter project. That would totally be fine as well. But you want to stick to sort of this finer, finer weight, around a two, maybe maximum three weight. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. And I'm using a three millimeter. Some scissors to snip your ends. A darning needle to weave in your ends. And you may or may not need a tape measure to take a measurement of your cat's neck circumference. In the description box below, I'll add um, a general guide to cat neck circumferences. And, you know, you don't have to be exact with this measurement at all. It, uh, you know, it's a very adjustable pattern. So, um, yeah, you, you can just make it to an approximate size and it should all be fine. Okay, so here's a scarf that I've made previously in the same yarn but just a different colour. So to make it, you'll need to know how to, and I've had it on Melba, so there's a few hairs in there, so sorry about that. Um, to make this scarf, you'll need to know how to uh, slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to single crochet, and then how to weave in your ends. So again, you know, like most of my patterns, they're super easy, beginner friendly. Um, I just want to encourage you to have fun with um, learning how to crochet and uh, doing something for your cat. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, slip knot on your hook, however you do that. So just a reminder that I don't uh, run through in any great detail the techniques um, that you need for these tutorials. Um, if you need to brush up, then check out a, a, uh, another channel's beginner series. There's heaps of resources online of, of how to do these basic techniques. Okay, so now we're going to create a ch our foundation chain. Now you'll need to make a chain that's multiples of 4 plus 3. So I'm going to do 12, which gives me my multiple of 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Then I'm going to add my 3. 1, 2, and 3. So whatever you do, make your chain, um, your foundation chain like this. So multiples of 4, and you can use a different multiple of 4 that I, than what I've used, and then add 3 chains. And then we're going to add an additional three as our turning chain. So one, two, and three. Okay. Now count uh, count six chains from your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And work a single crochet into that sixth chain. And then chain five, two, three, four, and five. And then skip three, so one, two, three, and work into the fourth chain along. Just a single crochet. Chain five, and five. Skip three and work into the fourth chain. And then finish off your row by chaining five and work into that last chain, which will be the fourth chain along. So skip three. So you're just chaining five, skipping three and working into the fourth chain and that split. There we go. So there you have your row one. Okay, so basically that's just the pattern. So chain five, three, 
four, five. And then we're going to work into the chain space. So working into the chain space, single crochet, chain five, four and five, and then work into the next chain space, chain five, three, four and five, work into the next chain space. Now what I like to do is just pull that, that uh, single crochet into the chain space relatively tight and then finish off chaining your five, four and five and work into this last little chain space here. Okay, so this was our turning chain here and work into that chain space as well. So we're only using single crochets and chains to create this pattern. So that's pretty much it. One, two, three, four and five. Turn your work, work into the first chain space. Chain five. Four and five. So we're just working, this is called the trellis stitch. It's just a very basic version of the trellis stitch. One, two, three, four and five. So I'll just go to the end of this third row with you and then I'll leave you to finish off and create the length of scarf that you want. Three, four and five and then into that chain space at the end there and that's you've got your first three rows. Now it'll look like it's fanning out but actually what will happen as you continue working it will pull it in and you'll get this this long rectangle shape to your work. So as you move along it'll 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 pull your work in to create this even edge rectangle rectangle shape. So continue on. Now I've made this one. Now Melba's neck circumference is around 23 24 centimeters. I've made this one at 42 centimeters approximately. So that'll give you an idea. Now it'll depend on um, how you want it to be worn. So if you want shorter um, hanging bits, then you'll make it shorter. If you want longer hanging bits, you'll make it longer. And then to wear it, we basically just thread it through. So fold it over, thread it through one of the one of the uh, holes on the other side. And there you have your scarf. So I'm going to finish my raspberry colour off camera. But that's pretty much the tutorial. And what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll show you how we weave in the ends. But, you know, that's pretty easy. easy. You could probably go ahead and do that on your own. And then, of course, once it's finished, you can just readily adjust this. You know, you can you can just adjust where you put the uh, the end through, and it's you know super simple, super easy to wear. And because these you know this this scarf is quite a lot wider than the holes, it actually stays quite secure. So, yeah, really easy. I'll be back once I've finished my raspberry version, and I'll show you how to weave in the ends. But keep on going, and just continue up until the length that you want. You can try it on your cat and see how it fits and how these parts are looking. I've made these a little bit longer um, just because I, you know, I kind of like that look. So, you, you, you know, you can do it as long or as short as you want. So I'll see you once I've finished crocheting my, uh, my scarf and we'll weave in the ends together. Okay, so I've made my scarf as long as I want it. And this one I've made slightly shorter just to, you know, just to have a bit of variation. Uh, actually, let me tell you how long I've done this one. Pull that out. This one. And, and just remember that, you know, this will most likely stretch a little. This one's about 39 and the other one was about 42. So, uh, centimetres that is. So, um, yeah, I've just made this one slightly shorter. But let's, uh, let's finish off. So, to finish off... You'll just yarn over and pull through and then just pull out a bit of a tail, snip off that end 
And then all that's left is to weave in your two ends. So this, as you can tell, is super simple as a project. So just take your tail end and thread your darning needle. And then you're, all you'll do is you'll just weave your ends down and through your work. So it's really that simple. So just I'm just weaving it down and I'll, I'll go down a little bit further. Okay, so I'm just finishing weaving in this end and like I said, I just follow the just follow the line of my chains until I feel like it's, you know, it's secure enough. And for a project like this, you don't have to go too crazy with the security. I just tend to change directions once or twice. And then just snip off snip off the remainder. There. And I'll weave the other end, other end in off camera. But there you are, there you've finished your super it's super simple but so pretty. I love this this trellis or fishnet pattern whatever you'd like to call it and it's so easy to fit I love it because it's just so easy to fit just work your one of the ends through one of the the holes in the pattern and then you have your your scarf so it's pretty and summery and quick and cute so uh yeah congratulations so Please send along your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can uh, tag us on social media, catventurous.crochet. And I haven't arranged that one very well, but um, yeah, I need to weave in that end. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye.